it. I guess we're just trying to have an unbiased look at it, people. They're trying to erase us. Would they like it though, if the love interest in this movie is a beautiful, tall white man? Do you feel empathy for white people? America is only 58% white. So I think that under the sea. Hey, you're not following the Danish tradition. I feel like if you're a minority in America or even part of the majority, you should be having this discussion right now. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. We are going to be discussing Disney's Black Little Mermaid controversy. I'm sure you've heard of it, uh, but let's take the conversation a little bit deeper. Under the sea. That deep. All right, play the trailer. Wish I could be. I don't know, she was singing with that Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston falsetto on the run. That's not how I remember beautiful white Ariel princess singing it. Well, I do believe that the original story was a Danish story. So unless there's a lot of black Danish people, why did they make the little mermaid black? All right, all jokes aside, guys, we got to address some pretty big questions here that are concerning pretty much everybody in America right now, guys. Uh, one, is forced diversity in the media good? you know, at the risk of pissing off one group of, but helping another. And also too, should we empathize with the white people who feel like America is slowly being taken away from them? And the third question is what are some solutions to help solve this race war or are there no solutions? If you're excited by this video, please hit that like button right now. Help us out with the algorithm. Anyways, David, let's get into it. Oh my goodness, over the past week, I don't know if it's like making a mountain out of a moho, if it's been blowing out of proportion, Andrew, I might have watched like 20 different opinions on Ariel being cast with Halle Bailey as Ariel, obviously instead of like a white redheaded cartoon, it's a black girl now. Uh, what are the main kind of reactions that people are having? I mean, obviously I would say this, I would say some more conservative white people are against it, right? They feel like it's erasure and they feel like they're losing America and they're having wokeness shoved down their throat. I would say some, you know, educated black women have been like, oh my gosh, this is so great to have representation and what does it mean? And then I would actually say, Andrew, a lot of black guys that I know are just kind of like, man, whatever. I don't even care about Ariel or like this Disney stuff. Give me a real character that actually shows some black empowerment, sort of like Black Panther. And that has been the general spectrum. Obviously as Asians, I don't know. I don't know what the Asian response has been. I haven't even heard anybody, Asian people even comment on this. I guess we're just trying to have an unbiased look at it, people. I um, did hear some people go, well, what do you think if we would have casted somebody else as Mulan? And then I kind of thought about it and I was like, you know, I wouldn't be against seeing it as long as they could speak Chinese and they could do everything. Uh, I'd be cool with it. Hey, you don't want to use Mulan as an example because there are like a ton of Mulan movies with Chinese girls playing here. So... You know, maybe if we had a non-Chinese Mulan, it would be kind of interesting. No, honestly, I would think Gabrielle Union as Mulan would be kind of fire. She kind of looks Asian to me. Um, all right, so I think like at the end of the day, organic diversity is probably what sounds the best in most people's eyes, right? Something where uh, a different culture or a different type of person is introduced to America, gets so popular that it's essentially becomes part of America. Right, you are referring to things like Asian food coming in from obviously foreign soil. Now words like omakase, kimchi, boba, you know, maitake, mushroom or whatever, they're all in Webster's Dictionary because they've been proliferated all across America. People love Asian food and they're gonna continue to love it more and more in years to come. Andrew, hip hop emerged from the black African-American experience. White people felt no like nothing real. I mean, they did like think it was bad for the kids, but they didn't really go against it in the sense of like, put more white people in it. Because obviously I think white people are actually owning hip hop on the back end and stuff like that. However, Andrew, when it comes to these European stories, do they have a point? All right, so I, I thought it was kind of funny to see white people come out of the woodwork and start being like, hey, you're not following the Danish tradition. And I'm like, hey man, for a lot of white people, you guys weren't claiming your European roots. I'm not saying all of them were, but a lot of them were just like, 
you know, I'm just, I'm just white. Like I'm just a mixture of this and this and this and this and this. And I'm um, all of a sudden you're like taking extra pride in the Danish roots. I'm yeah, like, guys, I, I'm like, Hey, name something Danish other than the cream cheese pastries with the blueberries. Uh, in them. Uh, 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 uh. Well, I think, you that, know, yeah. McDonald's is serving a Danish pastry now. You Anyways. know, for the longest time, I do think that Americans were just like, well, you know, my forefathers may have came from Europe, but I'm just an American and y'all can be like me. And then you get to be American that happens to just look like a not American, <laughs> but you can have Yo. my culture. Would they like it, though, if the love interest in this movie, because we don't know what he looks like yet, is a beautiful, tall, white man? Would that yeah. make up for it? I think Where the white guy gets with the hot black mermaid, are they going to be okay with that? Guys, you're going to be okay with that. Yeah, as Asians, guys, who do not have a dog in this fight, I'd like to see it. Like, I'm, sure he, it. I'm sure some of the fish will be Asian. <laughs> it's like people think we are the fish people, but yeah, I'm pretty sure like the other like humans in the story are probably not Asian. I mean, there are also some like semantics about it. Like, yo, Andrew, Asians uh, didn't get Ghost in the Shell. We didn't get Avatar. Obviously, now the new Quantum Leap, which was a famous nerd show from the 1990s, is being played by Raymond Lee, who's a Korean guy. Is that like wokeness being shoved down people's throat? If I'm a white nerd fan and I don't like the remake that has a non-white person in it, does that make me racist? I don't know. I feel like they're trying to make me racist. I know a lot of the excuse for Ghost in the Shell was that, oh, she's an android, so she could be any ethnicity. It could be Scarlett Johansson. Well, guess what? Mermaids aren't really a race either. It's a made-up thing, so it could be any race too. Oh, and I believe the original origin story of a half-fish, half-woman person came from Syria. Oh, oh, you want to go back to the old, old mermaid tale, the old little mermaid tale? So the crab is actually an Englishman, right? But then in the 1989 animated film, Film. They made him a Caribbean guy who sings Calypso music. Okay, so that was already changing it, but you were okay with that because it was the crab. But now that it's the mermaid, you're like, no, 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 no. We got to draw the line. Well, I'm okay with the crab being Shonda Paul, but uh, I keep the minorities out of the A rolls. All right, guys, we got to answer a question, David, because, you know, I don't, you know, we're not here to just like, make fun of white people because I, 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 I'm trying to empathize with them because to be honest, they feel like some of their characters are getting taken away. They're deleted. Once you have a black mermaid, it's never going to be white again, right? I mean, that's the theory. That's the feeling. Also, like they just feel like bits of America are just becoming less and less white and they're losing it and they're losing their power when maybe these white people didn't do anything wrong. You know, honestly, my massage therapist was actually is white he works on my ISOs on the side of my leg. And he actually went on a crazy rant the other day when I was getting my legs worked out about how he didn't like how, you know, they're just forcing wokeness down people's throats. And he goes, you know what, man? I just really miss the 90s, man. The 90s were the best. They were so much better. And then I was kind of asking him why he thinks that. And he was just like, I don't know why it's so much better. I did some research, Andrew. In 1990, America was 81% white. In 2022, America is only 58% white. So I think that, to be honest, a lot of white people are dealing with this fact that America is becoming less white. So they're starting to see more minority faces in places that they didn't expect to see. Like I said, I think white people expect to see minority faces in the NBA, in hip hop, in Asian food, in Latin food, but they're not used to minority faces taking traditionally white spots. Yeah, I mean, Man, I'm trying to imagine myself as like a middle to lower middle class, like Walmart cashier who's like feeling like they can't tell their white daughter that she could be cool because all the cool women are going to have to be black or Latino now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that like, obviously, I still think white people are in a great position in America. But anytime you lose anything, there's that feeling like, oh, my gosh, this is getting taken away from me. I remember during the pandemic where... Um, all the restaurants were open, but the bars were closed down. And I was like, I'm chilling because I like Asian restaurants. They're still open. But a lot of white people were like fleeing New York because they were like, I can't go to my favorite bar. I'm like, yeah, that's because you had like a thousand bars you like to go to. So you lost the most because you were up the most too. You had the most to lose. Yeah, well, even if a 60-point league is caught to 35, Andrew, it's still negative 25 on the mathematic charts. The truth is, guys, there are a lot of different types of white people in America, right? And some of them feel like they deserve all the success that they have, or at least the dominant narrative, because they may not have individual family, you know, financial, whatever success. But, like, I would rank people in terms of like white people, right? How they view the new Black Little Mermaid or this potentially dispossession or replacement theory. I don't, you know, I don't want to extrapolate it too far into those, but those theories do have some philosophical alignment here. Andrew, I would rank them on a negative 2.5 to a zero 
to a positive 2.5 scale, Andrew. And I would say people that are at negative 2.5, that's definitely Fox News being like, you know, they're trying to erase us. They are not making us feel cool about ourselves. We need to stop this and we need to elect leaders that stop this. People in the zero are probably like, hey guys, is this even a big deal? I don't even want to think about race. Like, I don't even see her as colored. I'm colorblind. Can we just stop talking about race and just talk about something else? Oh, the weather's real nice lately. Oh, there's a cold spell on the Eastern front. And then there's people, Andrew, at positive 2.5 that are like, oh my gosh, we are just beginning to atone for the sins of white people and what we have done to black people or what we've done to other minorities. And this is just a small drop in the bucket of what we're willing to give to make things right. And I'll tell you this, Andrew, there is like, like just different segments of white people distributed all across this spectrum. So it's very difficult to speak on behalf of all of them. And remember, remember, people who are mad about the whole race thing in media, especially like movie characters getting swapped around, remember, the elite rich white people that are actually running this country do not care. I, I don't know if it's, a, it's like a whole crazy uh, Illuminati ploy to like keep you distracted uh, with all these racial things, you know, while they're just out there making money, moving the market, taking Shorting billions the economy, and billions of dollars. Raising the inflation rates. I know, like, like, I know it's tough to see them as an enemy because it's more easier to see someone right across from you as the enemy. That looks different. Yes. But that has a different culture and yeah. sings the falsetto runs. Yeah differently yeah, due to some it's easier because culture. it's in your face it's media that's what like you consume as like a regular person i understand that and you know we're all regular people here but that's one thing you got to remember in the back of your mind guys but uh yeah it's also tough because i don't know what you want to do about that i mean real quick andrew do you feel empathy for white people because obviously if they drop from 81 percent in the 1990s and white people always say they love the 90s right like i mean i guess do you do you feel bad that i guess it's difficult for them to adjust to this this new more diverse yeah. world listen I, I feel a little bit bad for them because i just think you know they just have the most to lose to be honest but what i will say this is like as other minorities i don't think we need to throw it in their face every time we get a win like just because there is a black mermaid and she fits the role and she kills it she sings a song she has an amazing voice and she's cute too it's like like, don't like, you don't have to, see, we got the black mermaid, you're not cool anymore, white people, blah, 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 blah. Same with Asians, you know, obviously I know that there's that feeling as a minority because we get made fun of growing up and yeah. we want to clap back. And, but and, I, and I maybe we, we feel like whites, and I, by the way, guys, I understand not all whites won the game. I'm just saying this as a general. You're like, talking about the white yeah, winners. I'm talking about generalities here. Uh, I get it, you know, some white people in Appalachians, you know, all the opioids and stuff is crazy. They're living in trailer parks. I get it. You know, for me, when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, I always felt like some white people, and I'm obviously, I'm not saying all white people, I understand there's a huge, gigantic variation. You know, you got your M&Ms, then you got your Taylor Swifts and your Gordon Geckos and everything in between. I'm just saying like, I feel like as minorities, if we're starting to like win, right? I don't wanna be sore winners. Just like I didn't wanna be sore losers. And just like, even if we thought that white people were, and I, I don't think they all were, some were and some weren't, they were sore winners of the last like 100 or 200 years. I don't think that we need to like return them the favor to get them back. Cause I don't think that builds a productive society for everybody to live together cohesively moving forward. I got it, Andrew. Every race should just play every single race, but try their hardest to do a 10 out of 10 job in terms of passion and research what? and effort. What, David, you're saying that if someone gets cast that they should just respect the role and the culture that they're taking on? Yeah, I think that the thing that a lot of people didn't like is because white people used to take minority roles, but they fully wouldn't respect the minority aspects of it. I don't think no, Tilda no, no. Swinton gives an ish about Asian culture, you know what I mean? Or does she, did she eat Tibetan momos? I don't know. Yeah. So I just think if we actually had the real love and respect and the research and the passion for each other's diversity, then we could understand that, yeah, maybe these things, we eat different things or we communicate slightly differently or some of us are more introverted, some of us are more extroverted. But at the end of the day, yeah, maybe we all don't want to live in a country that's run by like 10 corporations. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Also, I really think that there should be like really well put together and well-funded discussions of very, very smart people coming together. And sometimes I don't like these discussions just happening on the TikTok comment section, man. I think like the government organizations need to sponsor some of these convos. Dude, I hate that CNN and Fox News sprinkle in 
shallow tier racial discussions like amongst the evening news. I think that that is ridiculous. By the way, of course I know, understand there's a need for racial reconciliation and racial understanding in America. However, it does not need to take place on two polarized uh, channels running ads. It needs to be successful people with a lot of reps and a lot of education mixed. We want need like somebody who's on the left, right, middle of every single color and every single creed to talk it out on a forum. Like literally, however we're doing it right now is creating more division. I generally disagreed with my massage therapist who was white, but I do agree with him at one point that the media is not helping. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below what you thought about this video. Is this a big deal? Why did the Little Mermaid just spark such a big like race debate? And who's right or who's wrong? Just leave your opinion down below. I'd love to hear it. Please hit that like button. Help us out with the algorithm and check out more episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. We're keeping it honest here and we're tackling tough topics. Thank you for watching. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.